Thanks once again for dropping by the channel. If you like the content, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. Now let's get into this. So the next fighter I'm going to discuss on my big problem kind of series that I have going on this channel will be a fighter who really does have big problems, let's face facts, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Now, Chavez Jr., he seems like he's been around for years and he has now at this stage. You know, obviously his father, Chavez Sr., a legend, one of the greatest fighters of all time, arguably the greatest Mexican fighter of all time, incredible fighter, tremendous heart. My favourite fight, I think most people would agree with this, would be his fight with, I um, can't think of his name now, Meldrick Taylor, the first fight in the 12th round. I've watched that fight in the HBO broadcast a couple of times. Great fighter, amazing. His son, on the other hand, he's um, he's something else. You know, He's not the fighter, to say the least, that his father was. Chavez Jr., Hard to believe, actually, he started his career at super featherweight, believe it or not. A super featherweight, Chavez Jr. Go and look at his box rec. You see the weights. Super featherweight, Chavez Jr. started his career at. It's hard to believe. Hard to believe that. But Chavez Jr., obviously, we know his last fight was against Danny Jacobs, where he basically quit. Um, you know, in a fight that wasn't really... He wasn't taking a shellacking in that fight. He just quit after five rounds. You know, he had a bit of a cut. And, you know, his hair bleached blonde, I think, so it was obviously bit red but the image i think a lot of people see well the two images that kind of stick with people are the image of chavez senior with his hand in his head with his the face he face in his hands and then the image of chavez jr in the hospital with senior looking on and a lot of people would say that you know senior must be disappointed and i don't think he's necessarily disappointed in his son as a person um i think he's disappointed that he doesn't have the fight in him that he had and it has to be expected, of course, if you think about it in, you know, you know, in the grand scheme of things. You know, you're talking about a fighter who, growing up, was a rich kid. He'd everything. You know, he didn't need to go without. You see that with a lot of people who were raised, you know, that way. They, they tend to be inclined to just, you know, kind of take the easy way and go the easy way. Especially when, if they're in boxing. Not all of them do. You know, there's plenty of fighters who had, you know, good upbringings. But, you know, they had tremendous heart, like Muhammad Ali and, you know, Marco Antonio Brera, people like that. But with Chavez Jr., you really do get the impression that, that the heart was never there. I don't think it's ever been there. Discipline's definitely not there. I mean, that's apparent from the middleweight days. Discipline's never been there. And he's saying that he wants to come back this year, possibly in March. The thing about Chavez Jr. is that even though he can, you know, fail on the big stage time after time after time, He's always given these chances. You know, there was talk of Badu Jack a couple of years ago, Carl Froch, Gennady Golovkin. And obviously, he got the Canelo fight, which is incredible to think. To think he made weight for that fight, considering that was 164 pounds. And he made weight for that fight. He got a Danny Jacobs fight. You know, he gets these fights. And he still gets these fights because I'm sure that Eddie Hearn, I know Eddie Hearn probably was left a bad taste in his mouth by the experience, but he'll probably still think, you know what? Maybe Triple G, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 168 pounds. That might be something I might entertain. Something like that. You know, he, he just gets these fights. I don't know how he does it. I mean, it's the name, I think, at the end of the day that gets it. Because Chavez Jr., when he was back down at middleweight, yes, he had a run as the WBC champion. And, you know, people say, you know, well, at least he won a world title. Yeah, look, he won a world title. You know, fair enough. Okay, he's won a world title. That's, I can't take that away from him. I'm not trying to. No one can take that away. But he won those fights back down at middleweight because he was huge. He was the Jared Hurd before Jared Hurd came along. That's basically what he was. If you look at some of the weights, and I think he was worse than Jared Hurd for being a weight bully. If you look at some of the weights he came in at in his middleweight fights, you know, when HBO did weigh him because there was some he didn't want to get on the scale, he was weighing north of 180 pounds. Right? So he was cutting an enormous amount of weight, an absolutely incredible amount of weight had to have been rehydrating intravenously he had to have been because you there's no way you could rehydrate that much and you know make all that weight because it's crazy how much weight he was cutting so he was able to beat guys like andy lee and you know some of the other guys that he fought down at middleweight it was short, purely because of the size of him because he was so much bigger he never had a great defense he wasn't the big he's not the biggest puncher in the world but he was just so much bigger that the guys weren't usually able to hurt him he was able to march forward throw some clubbing shots and eventually get the guy out of there until he came up against martinez sergio martinez who was able to outbox him 
you know, thoroughly dominated apart from the 12th round, which was, you know, a fun round, it has to be said. But other than that, Chavez Jr. didn't really do anything in that fight. You know, he got himself picked apart. And then, from then on, the career went down. We saw him missing weight against Brian Vera. The first fight, I thought he was very, very lucky to get the decision. The second fight, I didn't mind it as much. Fight I remember of Chavez Jr. Oh, he fought on one of Carl Frampton's cards in Texas. He fought a guy called Marcos Reyes. Marcos Reyes, light middleweight. Basically, if you ever seen that fight, go and watch that fight. It's on Daily Motion. Go and watch that fight. You will see an incredible size difference. And even then, it was competitive all the way throughout. Chavez Jr. is one of two fighters I've ever seen in my life who've had such little talent but get so much exposure. Okay, and Chavez Jr. is one of them. And the other one, and I'm, I'm telling you now, I believe in this, is Katie Taylor. You know, Katie Taylor's not that good. But she gets so much exposure, it's insane. So they're the two fighters I've seen who get incredible amount of exposure despite not being that good, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So moving forward for Chavez Jr., what does he really, what does he bring? You know, if you're a Triple G, if you're, we'll say like a super middleweight out there, like a David Benavidez or Gilberto Ramirez or, you know, Caleb Plant, what do you gain? What do you actually gain? from fighting Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at this point. People will still try and get him because he's a name and I'm sure promoters will still work with him. But when you consider he goes into a fight, doesn't take much abuse in the fight, doesn't take a shellacking and quits after five rounds just like that. Just that, enough's enough. I mean, what does that really mean? I don't know. And he'll still get fights, do you know that? That's the, that's the most fucked up thing about this. He'll still get fights on top of that. And that's not good for the guy's health as well because you're still you take he doesn't take beatings necessarily. You know, the, the only fight I can really say he probably took a beating was the Fanfara fight. And Fanfara is not, you know, I don't think he's ever really an elite, you know, light heavyweight. But and even in that fight, Chavez Jr. looked bigger than Fanfara, believe it or not. So, you know, those are some of my thoughts on this. At the end, oh the weight missing as well, you know, missing weight a lot, you know, cost himself money with that and missing weight bad. You know, he misses weight bad. So to me, the questions need to be asked to Chavez Jr. When he comes back, you know, I mean, he's back working with Freddie Roach, which I'm surprised at because he worked with Freddie Roach before. And, you know, Freddie Roach even said that the guy was a pretty Madonna. So, Chavez Jr., I can't say that, you know, he shouldn't come back. At the end of the day, it's his choice. But I, I just, I don't see why he's coming back. And I don't see why anybody would be wanting to get in there and fight the guy. Yeah, it's a name, but that's it. You know, he's not a particularly big punch. He's not a dangerous fighter. I, I just don't see where the appeal is. You know, I really don't. I mean, you're talking about a fighter. This is a fighter who's had DUIs in training camp, right? DUIs in training camp, driving under the influence in training camp. When most fighters are in bed at, you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night, the guy, my man's having his drink driving. So, where, what he does in the future is beyond me, you know, who he fights next, but... You know, I just, questions need to be asked, and will promoters be willing to work with him again? I'd imagine they probably would, probably would. But I really do think this is the last, last roll of the dice for Chavez Junior. You know, to do anything in the 168 pounds or in the 175 pounds, whichever. Sure as hell ain't going back to middleweight. I can tell you that much. But yeah. Those are my thoughts on this. Let me know what you think down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about Chavez Jr. If he does come back, if he is on one of these big, you know, matchroom shows, his own shows, Golden Boy shows, who will he fight? You know, who who else is there? Who would you pick him over at this stage? Because I'm sure there's plenty of... I don't want to pick him over anybody, really. None of the super middleweights. You know, John Ryder, Callum Smith, none of them. Let me know what you think down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, of course, subscribe, of course, if you're new. And as always, I will talk to you after. Okay. All right.